Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we are taking the cab over truck that we've been working on in the last video. In the last video we created a long haul version. Now we're just going to create a heavy duty version. It's going to have two front axles and we're going to kind of see where we go from there. So stay tuned and follow along. Hopefully this is a little faster and easier, but we're going to see what it what challenges this brings. With the completion of my video yesterday, I went ahead and released the sort of beta truck to some certain groups on my Discord server and I actually had a few comments. So I went ahead and actually made some changes. I did add this neat center console or rather ceiling console here. I just wanted the extra height. I think it looks better for a long haul truck and likewise the exterior has been remodeled a little bit. So you see there's no longer that little overhang, instead now it's sort of flat. And I added a bit of a spoiler or rather a wind guard on the back of the truck. So just some aesthetic things, but in addition to that, I renamed it from whatever the previous name was um, to Long Haul LH. So this is the Convoy LH. Now, like I said in this video, we are actually going to try to make a dual front axle truck and we're not going to use this as our starting point because this one actually ended up having um, certain parts that I added here. So we're just going to go back to the one from the last video. The one that was made in the last video was called the SL. So here we have it. You could see that the roof line is not sort of oversized and I'm going to go ahead and select the rear cab and move it out so we don't mess anything up. I'm just going to cut it to pretty much the stuff we don't need and we will bring back some of these things. I'm just going to leave it all here for now, but we could quickly trim off some of the unnecessary components and leave it such that it is quite easy to reinstall. So you see here with the removal of all this other stuff, it's really just a light, a button, and I'm going to go ahead and put this exhaust back because the exhaust does need to stay. Okay. Now, like we said, this version is going to be sort of a heavy duty. So we do need to make it have more power. And what I'm going to do to start us off is it, it, it's going to have to be extended. You know, we, we're already in a tight, compact chassis. So we're going to have to make some adjustments. And I think taking this portion of the build and dragging it out can sort of help us with that. Now, how long do I want to make this? I don't really want to oversize it like crazy, but we do have to see exactly what it is we need to have in order to fit these extra wheels. So I'm actually going to exaggerate it and put it way back there and kind of just see what it is we need because realistically, at minimum. Right now, we need a pipe splitter, like a four-way split, that I'm going to find right here, the cross. But I don't think that the cross can work here, to be honest. So I'm just going to go ahead and put two of them. And next, we have to put the big wheel. So you can see even these ones don't work. So technically, as close as it can be, or the closest place it could be is here. So this all has to just go like that. And we now take this and add it there. So that's ab about as close as we can have it, or that is literally the closest we can have it, um, have this wheel size without effect like possible. Now w with all that, we could actually bring the rest of the truck back in. The only difference is we'll probably have to remove this gas tank. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to drag this back and you will see. So you see that it clashes with that gas tank. Now, do I want to keep it this long? Do I want to try to reduce it even more? Ideally, it's not going to be too, too long. Like, I, I still want it to have... A, it'll be a bit longer, but I don't want to oversize it and have it, like, this long pulling a trailer. That doesn't make any sense in my head. So, let's try removing this gas tank and seeing now how that works. So, it actually does not go in as much as I would like. So, it's clashing with something else. Let's go see what that is. The easiest way to test this, in my opinion, is to bring the chassis back to where I'd like it to be. So let's say we actually get it to here. 
and then let's try to put these wheels on and see what it hits. So on either side, all it does is hit that one top node. And in that case, in the like, yeah, it's this one here and it's this one here, the electrical. So that's not gonna be too difficult to move around. So let's just assume we're gonna keep this length. This is the shortest we can get it without having to start removing all sorts of other stuff back here. And the nice thing is, while it is also, while it is a semi-truck, we can also use it for other applications. It could be a tanker truck right off the bat and all that kind of stuff. Now, back here, or down here rather, th we need to take this thing out. So that's this line here. And if we just put it here for, the, for now, it doesn't have to be perfect. Let's just make sure what this is. This is a regular block. So quite easy actually to move it around. We just do this. That one's a little tough to see where the where the um, pipe goes. And then we're going to put a fluid connector or hose connector. Okay, so this side's done. On the other side, it's very simple. All it is is a single cable anchor. So very easy to move or swap around. And that should now be it for our wheels. So it, as a test or trial point, we'll turn on mirroring and put that on. Reduce them to the right size. And I'll make the wheel properties match. We had 55 and 80. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for both of them. 55 and 80. Just so we don't have weird things going on where they're different and make sure that everything's merged up so other than the engine and some of that stuff this is kind of the basis of our chassis or our platform here i honestly do think just looking at this that we can reduce it even more and that's going to be that would happen by redu removing this gas tank additionally and it would happen by moving this back even further and moving this back even further is that gonna make or break this project i think it would look much nicer as a semi truck because like this with this size this throwing me off it looks like the cab ends here if we end the cab right here you see that the rest is like just so long it doesn't really make sense um but i do also really want to stress on the function of things and not just have it looking cool in my opinion but losing a lot of the functionality like having these two gas tanks that is not enough for a truck of this size and we're also gonna to have to move some things around additionally but let's see what that all comes to be i think something throwing me off also is this so i'm just gonna go ahead and grab this whole module and yank it away as well because we do not need that right now and even this one too we're most likely going to move around the exhaust anyways so put that over there for safekeeping that is just a single block we remove that and now we kind of have clear access to all sorts of stuff i'm going to go ahead and remove this now Interestingly enough, it seems that the gas line or the gas filler line went through here and down here. So it actually was feeding from this side. If I have to draw the continuation of the line, it was coming from here. This one is fully blocked. So that was actually the um, exhaust. So the exhaust is coming out right here. I'm going to put a little green thing so I remember it. Okay, this one here was also going to something. And then this down there, I believe, if I go here, this is one of the fuel tanks. So the fuel tank was here. So I can go ahead and remove all that. I will have to sort out. So that is the fuel manifold. Okay. So that's also one important one. This down here is something else so you have to keep track of everything that you are putting through your system 
if I follow the trail here, you see that this is the exhaust manifold. So this green one is actually exhaust. I'm going to go ahead and put that to be blue, to be honest. I'm going to put this one to be red. This is the color coding I use on my ships, just so I can easily find what I'm trying to do here. This is also something, and it is going to that. So that is actually fuel. So this pipe should be red, and this pipe should be red. So these were the, the way I connected both uh, sides of the fuel tank. So we do have some wiggle room here to play around with that. And all this now leads us to be able to delete this, for example. Because we're going to go ahead and reconnect it anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all this. One important thing is obviously this guy here. And this was just a pipe. It was a cross pipe. Or rather a corner cross pipe like this. But more importantly, we don't need the ones on the sides that are empty now. But we do need at least a T-pipe. So I'm going to go ahead and put that so we don't forget it just in case. Okay. Now, with all that gone on this side, and on this side, we can actually put this. I'm going to go ahead and put that over here next to all this other stuff that we don't really need right now. We will need it eventually. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that there. And that frees up some space. If I go and track and hold control and see what I could delete, I could delete these ones without any repercussions. Now this I cannot delete. This is a very long microcontroller for the transmission. So I'm going to leave that. But we're going to see if now that lets me move my... I guess I shouldn't have gave, given the wheels properties. But I'm going to see if I can pull everything in by one piece and this extra battery ah, we'll remove it for now I can go ahead and add extra batteries as we go just to not have it clogging up space that I could potentially use for something else I always like to drag it out to make sure I've moved everything and put it here so that's a bit better looking I think that's the size of like the stockyard that I have the buckle stockyard and if I go ahead and try to add the wheels, fantastic. Okay, so this is a much better size in my opinion. I mean, it was only by one block and we did all that, but I do think that that one block made a difference. Because this now still, this looks like a semi-truck. Like it's still long for sure, but it also is quite um, reasonable for a very heavy duty, heavy duty truck. Now what's cool is we actually have a lot of cylinders we can add. And maybe that's exactly what we need to do. <laughs> because this thing needs to be powerful. Let's say this is, it has eight wheels that it's pushing. And it's going to be a heavy, heavy carrier or puller. So with this current setup of the engines, I believe we said we had um, 12 cylinders. I stand corrected. It had 14 cylinders last time we did it. So we're going to go ahead and make it 16, 18... 20 or sorry 20 and let's see if we can put stuff on the bottom as well we may need to leave it open so let's just leave it as a 20 cylinder for now that's pretty <laughs> impressive and we definitely are going to need more gas tanks if we're going to try to keep this number of cylinders in this creation uh, but i love that i love that how it all works now I'm going to try and put this here and here for now. We could actually go ahead and remove that and fill it in with this block so it just looks a little more symmetrical. Now we're going to see if we can put something over top of this engine here. And the reason I left this opening is because we probably have to use it to feed to our gas tanks on either side. But the gas tanks are now a big problem. A little problem can be solved by just pushing the whole thing back. You see here we have single cubes, so we can go ahead and delete these. Over here, if we check these two, they're just regular cubes as well. So we can give it at least four tanks, which not great, but serviceable for now. And then I'm going to want to add some more somewhere else either behind the cab or whatever we're gonna have to find out but definitely definitely needs more gas tanks 
All right, so that is the wrong space, wrong sp spot for that. I definitely cannot see what I'm trying to do here. And it's the coloring, to be honest. It's the coloring of this. It perfectly merges in with the color of that slot. So that works now. Okay, so we have four of them. Uh, okay, and I want to put some other tanks somewhere else. All this here, actually, what is this? These are regular cubes, regular... So these are all regular blocks that we could actually delete. They're not needed for the back of the truck. Now the truck and the back of the truck do, do need to be closed off. We could easily accomplish that just by doing this. And I will add some styling here. And I'm going to add this stuff as well because we know it needs to go back. And we could even put the window that it previously had. Actually, scratch that I don't want to put this back yet because of the engine. The engine is protruding here, so I'm going to need to do something about that. But just to make our um, visual happy, that looks much better just as a starting bit. I think I had a bit of a breakthrough, actually. I sat and thought for a second here. What I'm going to try to do is the following. It may not look pretty, but end of the day, this is a cargo hauler. This is a heavy-duty, epic-type creation. So why wouldn't it have gas tanks just sitting back here? And then we could cover them up with some more bodywork like that. And that's just going to be where these gas tanks live. Now we'll see if that works in the long run, but for now, I don't see why that can't be our sort of approach. Now I, that was something actually, that was a buzzer. Okay, we're just gonna put regular cubes. Now this one definitely, to make it fit right in, I'm gonna try to put it so it's the opposite one of that, or like the little pyramid shaped thing, but here is where we need to put the gas tank. And I'm going to put this colored gas tank for now so I could see what I'm doing. Will this cab be able to open up if I have gas tanks there? That is something to be decided. I mean, my gut is telling me it won't be able to. It's going to clash and hit it. If that's the case, we could also move that manifold to the front and move these back. But what I'm going to do is just um, go ahead and try to open this up. The easiest way to connect these is just make a weird little tow hitch thing and just plug that into this. And we could even plug this into this. Not very nice looking, mind you, but it's going to be the test that we need right now. So if we turn this key, no, nope, it clears it actually. So we could have a stack of gas tanks there. Downside, obviously, for servicing the engine, you have to come into the engine bay from this side. You cannot come in from the back, but worth it, in my opinion, to have that many more um, gas tanks. In fact, this is going to be a super long haul type vehicle with a lot of range if we do have these gas tanks. And honestly, other than this manifold, we could even have another row and I could even put them put the other row here for example like this and not not on the bottom area with that done there though I will like to put some sort of cover for this area and that could be as simple as what we did for the other variant which would pretty much just be like a nice um, wind block here and then this portion here can also just be like that. And then that's pretty much covering it for the most part. And of course, some nice angled bits to seal it all off, just like this. And I will paint that in a second here. So that actually looks pretty cool. This truck is proving to be quite versatile, which I really like. I like creations that you can have multiple versions of and make it useful. Like, I love that. That's why I have so many versions of the Stampede, of the Rodeo. So, here we have this 
sort of cab system. Obviously, there is no window in the back. Yeah, you do have a little hole here, but I'm going to fill that in. So, that's all gas tanks. So, these ones on the bottom aren't actually that doing that much. And, funny enough, with all this, my brain is now telling me I should reduce the size by one more block. So, do I want to go ahead and do that? My gut is telling me yes, do it. But my brain is telling me no, don't, because we won't be able to have... Uh, four gas tanks, so we're gonna lose two whole gas tanks and actually this size is quite good um, I imagine hopefully that it can still do turns and all that good stuff So I'm probably just gonna leave it, but who knows I might decide I change it The reason also that I don't go ahead and write just change it right away is there is a little Additional bit of work that has to be done because right now we're maxing out this stuff right here you could see that we're using the clutch and then the splitter and then another clutch and gears and it goes down so we'd have to adjust this um, path which is fine I have no problem doing that but the downside of doing that actually is that I make my design less modular so for the other trucks it will no longer match them and then if I do any more further adjustments it just may become problematic so I'm probably just gonna leave it like this I do like how it looks it does look heavy duty so I have no problem. But now what we need to do is connect all our various things. So down here we actually said this was the fuel and it was kind of going this weird route. So we could probably go ahead and actually remove that whole line. That fuel line is going to get moved because now we have this opening here. And we still have a lot of cylinders but we even could go ahead and add one more cylinder just for max possible power to this creation here is the um existing fuel line i don't know why it's a different color than this but i'm gonna go now and connect my fuel line to my fuel tanks up here is this and this is just a regular cube and likewise that one's already open so perfect we're going to go ahead and feed them downward like that. And then I get to go and connect all this with a pipe. So here we're going to put one pipe just like that. Definitely turn symmetry off. That's a mistake. So do this. Now, how do I want to tackle this? And do I, well, I can't have the um, filler plug here. So I can have it somewhere else and I probably will. But what I can do is maximize my efficiency and my space by doing this sort of route. We also know we have to get over there to those fuel tanks. How to do that? Well, actually, let's start with that on this end. So here, I presume we can do this on both sides. As long as we can do that on both, yes. And then we're going to do this on both sides here too. Okay, just like that. And I think with that we can just drag it out like this. And I'm checking to make sure both sides work. And they do. So, perfect. Now this here actually is not going to be this. But we're just going to go and put the regular pipe. The regular T-piece pipe, mind you. That I'm going to connect like this. And then I'm going to put another T-piece in this direction because now we're gonna go and feed our way to this stuff. Are these in the same line? Oh, that is nice and convenient. So this will be a T-piece like that, and this is just going upwards to this one, and this is gonna go straight across. Now, the only thing that we are missing in this scenario is where to fill up the gas. So where do I wanna fill up the gas? Honestly, this is all an engine here, and I might even hide this bit. But it would be the most efficient if this one here has all these settings and then it goes up and then it goes to my hose my hose anchor so just like that so that would actually be the most efficient way to have this up there and we've now settled all of our diesel or fuel line problems the next thing is the exhaust. So here we have our exhaust, but remember it's going this weird route because we ended up um, 
having a very compact system in our first truck. Whereas now we have these these uh, cylinders right here that we could go ahead and put an exhaust on. So they end up being in a much more convenient place for us. And even this might work. If I go and put the um, manifold and put the T manifold like this and then modular engine and just have an exhaust coming straight up we will need the catalytic converter first so there and then exhaust out and it would be just like this and they'd go straight up to the top of the smokestack where we have our exhausts so like something like this I kind of wish they were a little further apart for visual purposes and that's easy enough to do we have some space to do it and also these um, catalytic converters are not in an ideal location so I mean maybe it's me being too picky now but I definitely want this to also look nice as all of my creations or at least what I think of all my creations so I am gonna optimize it and hopefully you guys are still enjoying watching now my fuel line is in the way, so I'm going to remove that for now. And I'm going to actually go ahead and put the T mo modular um, manifold back in. But I'm going to put it here this time. Like that. And I'm going to put the um, corner manifold like this. Well, or we could even do the catalytic converter. Sorry, we can't do the catalytic converter yet. We can do the straight piece if we want like this then have it going up here and that's where we could put the catalytic converter at that point if we want well and then it can go up to being our regular exhaust pipe do i think this looks better honestly yes the other one was a little too close that seems a little nicer i'd say now we still have to hide all this stuff and now have the added bit of moving the um, fuel line, but not hard at all. A lot of space to work with. I know I talked about this in another video where you have these micro builds or small builds. They end up being the most rigorous because you have to put everything in a convenient location. When you have this much space, it ends up being a lot easier and you have a lot of flexibility. <laughs> okay, so now the exhaust system's in and the um, diesel or the little uh, filler cap is in. So now we have all this power. We have some things back here that we have to reattach. We do not need any of this anymore. This is just the welder tool. So we do need to put this back, and I will. And we could even put the welder here for convenient repairing, just like that. And then on the opposite side is where I can put the electrical cable node. I do like a certain symmetry so that looks cool. Now in here, what do we want? Realistically, I mean diesel would be use useless, but actually I might need to put a microcontroller because we have to have something counting all these uh, gas tanks. So I will leave some space for that. And then up here, presumably we have our backup camera and our um, lights. I'm going to put it here. I don't like when they're up higher on top of this because this is like an air spoiler or an air dam or whatever. And in fact, I think it looks nicer if the air dam is not um, fully solid. And you save a tad bit of weight. I mean, negligible weight, but just creates a bit of a 3D look. And then these ones are the top of this stuff that we're going to add. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag this up. I'm going to position them all here so I can easily 
attach them on the truck. Just like this. Connect all that and drag it back in. And in place. Perfect. One thing I did not do in the other creation also was have, um, whoops, see that's something I overlooked. We deleted the breaker and now we have to go back, otherwise I have to reconnect all that electrical, so hang tight. Got my breaker back, it wasn't too far back, it was when I was kind of deleting all this stuff, so hang tight as I bring it back to where we were. There we have it, everything is back the way it should be, so we're good. Now one thing I was saying is that we could aim the camera down slightly as well. I didn't do that on the other creation, but maybe it's not a bad idea. So it's not pointing straight up. It's going to be aimed a little bit down. And I put the light here. I put some of this other stuff here. I put the little like control panel slash lifting panel here. So that is also probably a good spot for it. Now we, we can see how we want to hide some of this stuff or kind of build up our engine. This might be okay. Now over here, this part of the cab lifts up. I mean, this is okay, or we can close it off like what I did on the other one, where we just put sort of this air dam or air spoiler like this and seal it off up here like that, and then just continue its paint job down the whole creation got the blue and the orange so now it hides it a little bit it gives it a little bit longer of a length but now everything is concealed in here we have nothing back there so actually I could give it for I could give it a drive but we know we have to change a few things these wheels I'm just gonna assign them right now the same principles or same properties I'm gonna put a variable braking here and I'm gonna put a variable braking here I'm also going to put the handbrake, if I could find it, right here, so we can make sure they all have handbrake applied. What I will do though is the turning radius on these wheels cannot be the same as these front ones, so I need a function. And off the top of my head, I do not know what the ratio is, but it cannot be... Um, turning at the same same place I'm just gonna put it here for now and then put it in a nicer spot in a bit but pretty much we'll need two of them also because we have the different wheels and we have here a steering so front left I'm gonna put here and then I'm gonna have the front right on the other side I'm gonna put that one here and let's just go with like I mean, this is where trigonometry and all sorts of stuff come in, but I'm just going to go ahead and multiply it by uh, 0.6. So let's just see what happens if it's 0.6. And same thing with this one. So they're both 0.6, so they're not going to turn the same amount, which is expected. And I'm going to put that right here. So with those functions now, the only thing left is the gas tanks. I do have a microcontroller somewhere for the gas tank. I just don't know where. Oh, right there. Two gas tanks, except it's not two gas tanks. It's a couple of gas tanks right here. So this microcontroller is now outdated because we cannot possibly use it, at least not in the way it is. Um, I'm gonna drag it up to the top here and see what we can do with it. Okay, right now we have a few of them plugged in. So we have this one plugged in, we have this one plugged in. I'm gonna put this tank as well. And I'm gonna put this one here. Content, perfect. Just need to make sure that they're aligned. The hole there, wow, so they're, they weren't aligned. Okay, that's actually interesting to note here it's on the top and then on the second one it is oh here it's on the top okay good it was this side that I played around with actually because it was uh, necessary for the truck to function properly to have it at a lower spot but now we have it in the right spot 
Now I actually did accidentally remove the node, but easy enough to replace it. So we have these four are now connected. And then we have six up there. Logic dictates we could increase the size of this thing, or we could do something else. I can add in five more of these, like five more controllers. But let's see if that's that helps us. Ah, as far as space goes, this here can be reduced by one because we don't need all of them. So I can go put that one there and put this here. So this is A-OK -okay here. And all I need to do is plug in, first of all, actually no, take note where I have to connect this to. So it connects to this and it connects to that. OK. So this new one connects to this and it connects down here. There was fuel capacity or was it fuel level? There we go. Okay. So four of these, this one here, we plug into this and then this one, we connect to all six of these a little confusing, but makes sense in the long run. And I was definitely plugging it into pressure. So we can't plug it into pressure. we got to make sure we plug it into content content and then here content content and lastly content so one of these can go back to its original spot probably the original i guess i didn't have to change the size of it it kind of impedes me moving forward but whatever let's just put this one down beneath the chassis here beneath in the frame it was somewhere along these lines if I can find it, and it was upright. Right here. Good. Now that one's in. Lock it in place. And now we have to deal with the smaller one. Is there room for it here somewhere? Doesn't look to be, because it still is six or three wide. But I'll find space. Perfect. What better place to put this than on the back of the cab? Just like that. Inside the cab it won't look like anything, but on the outside you'll have a little indent, which is fine. And then these things have to get moved, and I'm just going to put them down here somewhere. We may have to split them up, actually. Put the left one on the left side and the right one on the right side and I'm talking about I, I do know my lefts and rights so I was talking from the front of the vehicle but anyways we do put this there and here join everything in cool all right so that looks good now we have a couple of random dead places where we could put batteries for example but for now, let's just fill in with cubes or blocks so it looks equivalent. And then on the underside, that's where I'm going to go crazy with the batteries because any um, batteries that we do put here are going to help our towing capacity when towing heavy trailers. So, I could even put a huge battery here, or like not a huge, huge, but a good sized battery can probably fit in this area or we just do this so I've added a couple here this is one of my pet peeves the game doesn't allow batteries to be linked so you have to kind of do it this way anyways four batteries on this side go to my electrical A, which is my hot side. So one, two, three, four. Perfect. And let's see if I can put some on this side as well. Ideally four, so the weight matches. Of course, back to my little pet peeve that doesn't 
necessarily work so you have to kind of place it in, on ledges and stuff so that's two three and we're going to try to put a fourth one somewhere as well probably right alongside the drive shaft four we could even put more batteries but let's put some random weight blocks and I know we don't want the front too too heavy but it'll help um, weight does help stabilize things and put pressure on the wheels especially the wheels on the front so you can make sure that you are um, properly getting the power from your wheels so I should put way more batteries on this side okay one two three four five six fantastic all right let's give it a test drive spawned it in looking cool let's see the back open the bay oh yeah we have to change that number I actually changed it on the other one but I'm gonna make it the same so it's 0.4 it just opens up a little nicer and better boom look at that thing looking awesome okay open the engine bay turn on the light we didn't I didn't actually go ahead and put anything in this upper region so I could put something behind here and I could leave that either open or put something else but let's try to drive it I'm so curious how this works all right super load SL Oh yeah. Oh, ho, ho. that is a heavy front, folks. I mean, when you brake heavily like that, look at that. Jeez. But what's very interesting is my turning radius or my wheel radius does seem to be okay. Probably put a little more turning radius on that back wheel actually just because watching it like this but what is cool is that this thing seems to have a ton of power and because all the power is going to all the wheels I do think that we can actually get away with towing very heavy loads with this thing so what I just said is well I do have a lot of weight on the front which is partially good but partially not good I'm gonna remove that weight there and then see if we can add some more weight here without destroying the visual aspect of the thing. I do like how this looks. But maybe there's something we can do. And if not, it's not a big deal because it's not intended to be driven like crazy when you're on your own. You're supposed to be towing a trailer. The same as the one we did for the long haul. I put... A full two trailers behind and let's see what happens when we try to tow this now it seems that the cab is actually being pulled backwards so maybe we do need that weight on the front axle but overall it seems that we are able to tow it fairly easily now that is granted at a much um, lower speed right now. I'm, I'm, I've turned on the cruise control, but if we do try to give it maximum power, and let's see if we turn this on too. Let's see how easily we get up this hill. I'll even turn on the trailer boost. Comparatively to the other one, this is doing it much easier. This is towing up this hill, not a problem. In fact, that back trailer is even swinging. So, this is plenty of power, folks. I think, I, I didn't set out to make it stronger or faster than the stockyard, but it, it seems that this one with these four axles will gain the title of the strongest uh, buckle truck, at least to date, and at least as far as the semi truck lineup goes so I'm actually super thrilled this thing is awesome I will bring back the little weight cubes on the front because they will balance this out a little bit better I think 
All right, let's see if we don't flip here. Pull, pull, pull. Also, the gas capacity, I didn't even check to see how much it had. 1600, that is awesome. Oh yeah. Actually, and this is all without even having the trailer boost on. So this is a very strong truck, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you like these creations. I hope you like my videos. Stay tuned for more creations. Stay tuned for more videos. And, as always... Happy Stormworksing, everyone.